morning everyone. I mean, it's a beautiful rainy morning here in the Appalachian Trail. This is Pooh Bear coming at you. Um, we are at Dahl Flat. We are right on the border of um, North Carolina and Tennessee. One last time, I think. Um, we are at mile marker 389.1. As I don't know if you can see outside the uh, Ten or not, it's raining outside my shelter here. Uh, I've got the camp pretty much so tore down. Um, I got my cup of um, cafe mocha. I'm just sitting here warming up a little bit before I get out. Um, it sounds like from what we're hearing on the weather reports, it's going to be raining all day. Um, so you know how it is. Uh, my biggest, my biggest uh, mile days have been on rain days. Um, I got my rain gear on. I'm going to sit here and drink this. Um, Cafe cocoa, cafe mocha that I've made, and then I'm going to tear down my last bit of my shelter, wrap my stuff up. Um, I think you guys have seen some, probably seen some pictures online of my shelter that I have, and I sleep in a hammock, and I've got this um, uh, 10 by 12 tarp that I put over top of it, so it does help keep me dry when things are going on. Um, yesterday was an incredible day hiking. We went over, um, started off going over Roan Knob which was about a 6,500 foot elevation. Um, didn't stay at the shelter the night before because it was just another big day. Um, but that shelter up there on Roan Knob is actually, from what I'm told, is the highest shelter on the whole Appalachian Trail. Then we went over uh, a couple really big um, knobs that we went over. Ended up going over a big hump and little hump. Let me tell you, they were two um, really nice mountains to climb over. And they're really different in a lot of ways. Is I mentioned some of the terrain on the Appalachian is changing now. We started off, we were all in the forest, and both Big Hump and Little Hump were pretty much so open mountaintops. And just naturally, I hear that's just how they are. It's not that anyone ever went in there cutting them. There just has never been trees there. They're, they're home to um, several species of lilies, or one species of lily that's only ever that's only found in that place. There's several other plants that are there that are um, indigenous only to that area, which is really kind of cool. These plants aren't found anyplace else in the world, just on these mountain tops. Um, we're hoping to, I'm hoping today that I'm going to pump out 20 miles. I really want to get to Damascus by Saturday. Um, Damascus is a really big spot on the Appalachian Trail. Maybe that's where they have the big trail festivals are, which is, I'm going to be about a week and a half ahead of the trail festival, which is good. I want to get keep ahead of those people because it's going to be a really crazy top. Um, but that's also the point they say where um, your odds of increasing or finishing the Appalachian Trail increase. I think we're going to, when we get to that point, we're going to be about 460 marker. 500 miles is really when you start seeing the success rate of the people that make it that far. And of course, you know, we're going all the way up and then coming back. We're going to sit on, uh, get on the Kennington and just say tag and start running back down the hill and he'll head south again. And one of the things I just wanted to talk real quick about in regards to that is, um, I had a couple people even talk about setting goals when they're out here. You know, some people have told me that maybe my goals are too high and I need to have a goal that I'm going to get to this point or get to that point. You know, that's not how I see setting goals. I see um, anything you want in this world, you've got to reach for the sky. You reach for your best all the time. And then what you do is you set smaller sub-goals to reach, that, reach the big goals. You know, in my case, you want to do a yo-yo hike. You know, as far as I know, there's only been seven people that have ever completed a yo-yo hike in one year. There's been one person it's actually done it, I think, four times continuous. And what I hear is he was um, a homeless person. I guess maybe we all are homeless living on the Appalachian Trail. But so it's a little bit different. He had no place else to go. He wasn't promoting anything. You know, and I want you all out there to see that you can set the goals that you want, no matter how unrealistic others may think they are. If it's a goal of something that you want to do, you can do it. You know, it's just one step at a time, one small change at a time. You know, it's going to be a, a day out there that's going to be a hard day to hike and it's going to be rainy. You know, the elevation shouldn't be terribly crazy today. Um, so today, in combination with the rain and me wanting to keep warm, um, I really think I can book through and get out some miles. And that's my goal for today. My goal today is 20 miles. You know, my big goal is, and one of my next goals is, is to get to um, Damascus by um, Saturday, Sunday at the latest. But also then my... Um, the Super Bowl right now is to get to Kennington by sometime around the end of June now. Ideally, my ultimate goal is if I get there, I think, by like June 25th or 26th, 27th, somewhere. That would be a great day. I'm going to tell you a little bit more why that date means so much to me. 
um, later on, but the pace I'm going right now, it looks like I'm going to get there about July um, 5th, I think it is, is what I calculated it out. So I want to see if I can't pick up the pace. We're doing a lot of 15s right now. Sometimes I'm getting up to some 18s. These are 18 miles or 15 mile rides, but you know, I really think I can do more. Uh, I see it's getting a little windy out, which is good because it's going to help dry up my tarp a little bit, but you know, um, the, the weather's picking up, you know, but it's still going to be a beautiful day. We're already thinking about what we're going to do to get rid of our um, winter gear. And once I do that, I'm going to be able to probably drop out another five, six pounds out of my pack. As the pack gets lighter, I can move faster. You know, I'm getting in really good shape. I've got my trail legs, I think. Um, meeting a lot of great people. Nobody else is really up in the camp right now. I think people are hiding out in the rain in the tents. Because um, you know, most people just, we just don't want to get wet. You know, we don't want our gear to get wet. You know, that's what makes it really miserable out here. I um, hope you guys all have a great day. Thank you for watching Hiking for Wellness. And um, go to our website soon. And we're going to be having t-shirts up out on our website real soon. We're working with a new vendor. I think it's Sunland Print, and they're going to be making t-shirts and selling them through their website for us. We're going to link our site to them. All profits to the, um, the t-shirt sales are going to go to our scholarship fund to help people find wellness and help pay for wellness facilities. Um, primarily, I'm probably going to send a lot of the money to Sierra Tucson because, as you all know, that's my that's the facility that I'm an alumni from, and I really know a lot about them and think they do great work. Um, continue to keep following us on our track. And, you know, Drop us an email of encouragement. You know, I'm getting a lot of great comments on our videos. We've put them up. I'm not getting the videos up as often as I was like. Just because of cell coverage, we're working on getting a um, Verizon cell phone sent out to me. So this way we can start doing the radio show again. Um, but I'm going to get going and I'm going to finish this cup of, cup of um, cafe mocha that I have. And I'm going to hit the trail. And hope you guys all have a great day out there too. And we will see you tomorrow. Bye.